Our opening liturgy tonight, a truly international family event of Schoenstatt. International because all eyes of Schoenstatt around the world are centered on Milwaukee, on us. This is the year before 2014, and so during this time, as we celebrate the greatest gift of Schoenstatt for the church, we are preparing ourselves for that 100th anniversary celebration, which will take place next year. Y como familia internacional, en este acontecimiento internacional, la familia quiere ofrecer a la iglesia el don más precioso de Schoenstatt. ¿Cuál es? El santuario hogar. Y por eso, los ojos de toda la familia se concentran a Milwaukee. Y creo que no es solamente un sueño, como en la primera lectura, sino también el deseo como saqueos, porque el Señor quiso permanecer en esta casa. And so what we see in our readings, we see that it's not only God's presence becomes present when Jacob dreams, no, it is also the longing of a person that finds an unexpected kind of fulfillment. Today, salvation has come to this house. And so the home shrine gives us the opportunity to realize that God is with us. We are living in the presence of God. Para mí, la, lo más importante del santuario hogar es este punto. Vivimos siempre en la presencia de Dios. A través de la Virgen, a través de los símbolos, a través de nuestro anhelo de vivir una vida santa. Capital de gracia. During this weekend, we want to focus on the home shrine as the vision of our founder, to see the fruits and the reality of the home shrine and as a gift for the church. We want to see it in its history, in its development, and in its future. Tonight, I would like to say three short points which I see are the main aspect of our week together, our weekend, for me at least. What would I would like to for you to take home with you? I think as I prepared myself now for weeks and weeks and weeks, I thought about it and I thought the first point should be to emphasize that awareness we live in the presence of God. The second point is the living shrine. And the third is the interwovenness, the solidarity of the family through the home shrine. Como regalo de Schoenstatt para cada uno de nosotros y también para la iglesia en general. Yo quiso decir para esta noche, para mí son tres puntos claves que explican el sentido de vivir en el santuario hogar. Primero, en primer lugar, Vivir siempre en la presencia de Dios. En segundo lugar, el santuario vivo. Y el tercer punto, la solidaridad familiar. 
lately I have used a commercial to express something that emphasizes living in the presence of. And the commercial asked, how long do you have to sleep in the garage until you turn into a car? <laughs> and I have asked that question many times and many places, and I have received many different answers. The pessimists among us will say it will never happen. You will never turn into a car regardless of how long you sleep in the garage. And that is true, of course. But that's not my point. How long do you have to live in the home shrine until you turn into a holy person? That's the point. That's the question. Yo no puedo vivir constantemente en un lugar santo sin transformación interior en una persona santa. Esa es una conclusión normal, efectiva. Pero para nosotros, nosotros vivimos en un santuario lugar siempre, de hogar siempre y nada pasa pasa nada. No sé. Vivimos por 50, 60, 80 años y somos santos. No sé. Tengo un, una canción de Paul Simon, del libro El poder de nuestros vínculos, del padre Guillermo Carmona. The song is, I am a rock and I am an island. Un día de invierno en un diciembre profundo y oscuro, estoy solo mirando por la ventana a las calles de abajo, cubiertas de un velo de nieve que acaba de, de, de caer. Soy una roca, soy una isla. He construido paredes, una fortaleza profunda y poderosa que nadie puede penetrar. No necesita de la amistad. La amistad causa dolor. La risa y el amor son lo que yo desdeño. Soy una roca. Soy una isla. No hablan de amor. No, ni, ya hemos oído la palabra antes. Está durmiendo en mi memoria. No perturbaré el sueño de sentimientos que han muerto. Si nunca hubiese amado, nunca habría llorado. Soy una roca, soy una isla. This beautiful song of Paul and Simon emphasizes that point very much. I am a rock, I am an island. If I would have never loved, I would have never cried. Tengo mis libros y mi poesía para protegerme. Estoy protegido por mi armadura escondido en mi habitación a salvo dentro de mi matriz. No taco, no toca a nadie, ni nadie me toca a mí. Nobody will touch me, and I am touching nobody. Soy una roca, soy una isla, una roca no siento dolor, y una isla jamás if I am a rock, I don't feel any pain. And if I am an island, I don't ever have to cry. That's what many experience in our society and what we want to be exactly the opposite. If we are an island, then we are the island of a holy family that multiplies. And if we are a rock, and we're talking about our symbols, and that's the second point I want to make. Living in the home shrine has to turn us into a holy person. 
But living in the home shrine has become concrete in the Milwaukee years through the living shrine. And that is not just living as a holy person because I am baptized. No. The living shrine means I live my symbol in the home shrine. And that's a point which we usually don't make. Una de las preguntas que yo tengo para nosotros en cada país es la pregunta ¿Cómo se vive su símbolo personal en el santuario hogar? No es algo para jugar, sino algo de vivir. José, Joe, Yen, él está el tabernáculo por todo, toda su vida. El tabernáculo. Su hermana, que está aquí también, es la campana. Y todos los símbolos están representando aquí, en la familia Yen. Y eso es algo que nosotros pueden, podemos compartir durante estos días. And so I think we need to listen to each other, to the different areas. That's why we have an international Home Shrine Congress, to see the different routes in Argentina, in Germany, here in the United States, and to see how do we live our symbol in the living shrine. Living shrine is not just a holy family. Living shrine is I am Saint Michael. I am the crown. I am the whatever in the home shrine. And that is what we want to work on. And the third aspect, which I have also taken from Mike and Marge Fenelon, as they are traveling around the world and as they have read those many prayers which Father Kenton has prayed in the homes here in the families in Milwaukee. Father Kenton has emphasized very much the fact that Bernard, who was here tonight, bringing up the Father I symbol, because Bernard Fenelon wanted to be Father Kenton in the family. I am Father Kenton. No, you cannot be. There's only one Father Kenton. No, no. Bernard, five years old, six years old, looks up to Father Kentonich and Father Kentonich says, Oh, right, you'll be Father Kentonich. You'll be the Father. And therefore, the Father I symbol is your symbol, and you will live that. And we have beautiful testimony of how that becomes a reality. Viviendo mi símbolo en el santuario hogar es mi vinculación con mis hermanos y hermanas y esta vinculación es una misión muy personal efectivo no solamente por la familia mía sino también por toda la familia de la iglesia those are the three points I wanted to make tonight and I wanted to conclude with a fact, to remind us of the fact that we are a family of miracles. The latest miracle of the 22nd of May, 2013. And I wanted to congratulate you and myself for that miracle. Because we live the history of Schoenstatt. You know what miracle that is, right? the freedom of the original mind.